All right, Anatomy students, uh, welcome to our last system that we will study here in this school year, and that is the reproductive system. Uh, it's going to take us some time to get through simply because it's the, uh, the only system where we have two very different versions of what's going on versus male to female. Um, so we're going to start with the male, and then after we finish two lecture videos on the male, then we're going to move to the female, and then the last one will be uh, the physiology of sex. So uh, I ask that we maintain a high level of maturity during these lectures. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody, today we're going to talk about our last system here for anatomy class for the year, and it is going to be the reproductive system. Now, the reproductive system is going to be a little different than uh, most of our systems, simply because we have two versions. You know, skeletal system is all pretty much the same. Muscular system from male to female, you know, is virtually identical. Uh, but this one, uh, we have some differences. So first, we're going to look at the male because... Um, Really, as far as reproductive reproductive system uh, goes, the male has it pretty easy, especially compared to the female. So let's get let's get started and um, get the male reproductive component finished. By definition, reproduction is the process by which new individuals of a species are produced, and the genetic material is passed from generation to generation, or as I typically say, uh, this is the propagation of the species, making more people. The male, we'll start with the male, um, organs of reproduction are grouped, and this also works for the female as well, as gonads, ducts, and accessory sex organs, and we will discuss those here in more detail. The male structures of reproduction include the testes, also known as the testicles, a system of ducts, and those ducts include the ductus epididymis, the vas deferens, the ejaculatory duct, and the urethra. The accessory sex glands, which would include the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the Cowper's gland, and several supporting structures, including the penis. Now we're gonna find out that um, in the mixture of semen, uh, it's not only just sperm cells. Uh, the sperm cells need a medium to swim in, and that medium is secreted by the combination of the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the Cowper's gland. But um, we'll get there. The scrotum is a cutaneous skin, a cutaneous outpouching of the abdomen that supports the testes. So for the male, why is it important that the testicles are kept outside of the body cavity? Um, totally different from the female, as I'm sure everyone is aware the uh, gonads for the female are the ovaries and they are kept inside the um, lower portion of the abdominal pelvic cavity. So they're inside the body cavity, but the male gonads, the testicles or testes are housed outside of the body. And there is an important reason for that. The reason is the production and survival of spermatozoa require a temperature that is roughly two to three degrees lower than normal core body temperature. Um, if you ever uh, talk to someone that has had trouble conceiving, 
when uh, they go to see a um, fertility expert, the doctor will ask the man in the, the relationship if um, he wears boxers or briefs or if he wears a lot of tight um, pants. And if the answer is yes, then uh, to, to the briefs or that he wears tight uh, clothing, then the doctor will recommend that he switch to boxers and uh, that he wear looser fitting pants. Um, what happens is with tight clothing, um, the, the testicles are held too close to the body wall and the, they can't, um, the, the scrotum will not allow the testicles to come away from the body wall to cool off. So when they get too warm, uh, the natural tendency to allow the testicles to fall away from the body wall can't happen. The clothing holds them too close and the uh, temperature in the testicles becomes too high and that will uh, destroy and kill uh, a lot of the sperm cells and that will lower that man's sperm cell count. The testes or testicles are paired oval shaped gonads in, and are housed in the scrotum. The testes contain the seminiferous tubules, and this is where sperm cells are made. These are where the products of meiosis that I'm sure we all remember from biology class, that meiosis is the process where uh, one diploid cell will divide twice go through two divisions and end up and give us four haploid or half the chromosome number uh, cells. And then those cells will then be grown through the process of spermatogenesis into sperm cells. There's also the sustanticular cells or nurse cells. Um, those support and protect developing spermatogenic cells. Now you may be wondering uh, what do they protect those sperm cells from? And surprisingly, um, because those sperm cells are so different than the man's body cells that the immune system will actually view those cells, the sperm cells as foreign invaders and they will attack and destroy them. So the sustanticular or nurse cells uh, protect the sperm cells from a man's own immune system uh, and basically will will vouch for those cells uh, when the various white blood cells come around you know your your killer t's um, or uh, your helper b's come along um, they'll say hey these they're with me uh, Go on, you know, you don't have to worry about them. I've got them. And uh, please do not destroy them. And that's how, that's what the sustanticular cells will do. Spermatogenesis is a process in which immature spermatogonia develop into mature spermatozoa. Mature spermatozoa consist of a head and a tail, and that will contain a midpiece. Their job, they have only one function in their existence, and that is to find a mature egg inside a woman's body, almost always in the fallopian tube or uterine tube, and fertilize that egg. And to fertilize that egg, they simply will penetrate the cell membrane of that egg or oocyte and they will deposit their chromosomes that they carry. They're 23 of 46 chromosomes. Remember, gametes are haploid in number or half the chromosome number. And the reason is because every person on this planet genetically is one half their mother and one half their father. Uh, half of the chromosomes come from mom and half the genetic material or chromosomes come from dad. And the sperm cell is the deliverer of those 23 chromosomes. So this is what a single sperm cell will look like. The acrosome is a cap-like vesicle with enzymes that help a sperm 
to penetrate a secondary oocyte to bring about fertilization. So it's, it's not simply the first one to get to the egg. It's the first one who can penetrate the plasma membrane of the egg. And it has to basically digest its way through. So the acrosome will release the enzymes to allow the sperm cell to break that phospholipid bilayer and let that cell penetrate inside the egg. And then once it does, then it will open up and it will deposit the chromosomes inside the cytoplasm of that much larger secondary oocyte. The midpiece contains many mitochondria, and I'm sure we all remember from biology class that the mitochondria is nicknamed the powerhouse of the cell because it produces ATP. And ATP, short for adenosine triphosphate, is the energy molecule used by our cells to do work. And the work that a sperm cell must do is to swim with its flagella. Uh, so that midpiece is going to have a lot of mitochondria to make a lot of ATP so that once that sperm cell starts swimming, it doesn't stop. That tail keeps flipping, uh, keeping that sperm cell swimming in uh, the direction it is pointed. Continuing on with the male, uh, as far as spermatozoa or mature sperm cells are concerned, they are produced at the rate of about 300 million per day. That's right. I want to I want to let that sink in for a minute. 300 million sperm cells can be produced in 24 hours. That is just under the population of the United States of America in sperm cells that he can make. So the average, uh, during an ejaculation, a male can release somewhere around 150 to 200 million sperm cells, um, at, as high as 300 million um, in, in one average ejaculation. And then that means that man can produce and replace those sperm cells in 24 hours. Um, so clearly, uh, sperm cells are very cheap and easy to make because they can they can be replaced in really not that long uh, of a time. Uh, so just to me that that's an amazing uh, biological fact right there. 300 million per day. Uh, there's a little over 300 million people in the United States of America. And uh, that just gives it a little perspective. Once they are ejaculated and are in the woman's body, they have a life expectancy of about 48 hours within the female reproductive tract. So that means um, a woman technically can get pregnant two days after intercourse. So that is uh, also an interesting fact. All right, that's probably going to be enough for this first video lecture. All right, that's going to conclude video lesson one. Um, that's going to get us halfway through the male portion of the reproductive system. And the second part will be on the next video. So look for that. Um, I'm sure you can find it there on my page and it'll be video lesson two on the reproductive system. So thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget, click like and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.